Hi everybody, this is Zephy Brody. I am here to do a tutorial for Melly Ameko. We are going to be doing her pinup girl pencil skirt dress, fit mesh one, and it will be in GIMP, this particular tutorial. So we are on a marketplace for Second Life, and you can see um, her store in this particular dress that we're doing today. These are the faces. This is a very important um, thing to pay attention to when you are building, so you know how many faces are involved, things you may have to change or want to change up. Um, this is what it looks like all the way around. These are her pre-textured models that you can wear. Um, not supposed to sell those or any part of her done textures so this tutorial is teaching you how to make texture of your own so here um, as you can see is very cheap prices we're dealing with and um, if you're intending to sell them you can sell them for a lot more than that um, so you make your purchase here in, in uh, marketplace and then it will arrive here in your receives folder and it comes already unpacked as you can see in here you will need to what I usually do is drag one out and have a look at it and um, try it on sometimes check it out um, check out the different colors that are in there and then um, go into the textures folder that comes with it and you will be needing the shadow map specifically for this tutorial I use these a lot so we will be going to um, down here at the bottom of that picture save I usually save as a PNG put it anywhere on your computer where it's going say save and then it will tell you here in Second Life that your file has been saved. Then, over in GIMP, we will have um, about six layers by the time we're done with this. So this is the first layer. You will open up that shadow map that you just downloaded, and it will be the base layer. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to uh, make sure I've copied and paste that again to second layer. On that second layer, the top one, we are going to go to a thing called Color to Alpha. This is a nice handy dandy tool that only exists in GIMP. Um, I use it all the time for taking these shadow maps um, down to alpha. So it would be a nice overlay to um, keep your shadows um, that you will be having on the top layer. So right now you are seeing the shadow over the top of an already existing shadow darkened it. We will be putting a new layer in between, we'll be putting several layers in between. We start out with this middle layer here and I have chosen some fabric from my friend over at Texture Me True. Uh, Gerard Tenworm did this one. I have multiplied this um, tiled it actually to make it fit the 1024 by 1024 format of the dress and so there is a tutorial I've done to tile fabric if you go now and say edit copy back over to your new layer and paste it on there anchor it down it's in the middle. 
what we're going to do now is cut this out. Um, I'm going to cut out the top bit of the front and back of the dress and I'm going to cut out the sleeves so that it's going to be a different um, material. But we're going to have this black silk on the bottom and on the cuffs and the collar. So I'm going to just grab me a lasso tool and come around here as carefully as possible and cut out this bit and cut out this bit. So that's none of you. Now, next we're going to make a new layer and it will be filled with this pink polka dot texture that I've also gotten from Texture Me True and tiled it so that the dots were smaller and the whole thing fit the 1024 by 1024. We're going to copy it and get on our new layer and paste it. Now with it, We put our skirt layer over the top of that. We don't need to do any more cutting on the pink. That turned out good. Now we will take a belt texture. I have got some, oh, I don't know, alligator skin type of uh, leather. And I'm going to take just a square, a rectangle of it. I'm going to edit, copy that, and we're going to put this where the belt is on here. A lot of experimentation sometimes to find out what parts of the template are what part on the dress in the second line. So at this point I will need even another layer. It's okay, you can have as many as you want. And on this new layer, we are going to paste the belt and move it up to where the belt is sitting in the template and anchor it. Then we're going to take our handy dandy lasso tool again and go around the bits that are just the dress and the collar. You take some fine tuning and delete that out of there. Now then, that is really about finished, except for you need to put in wrinkles. And um, because this particular shadow map is not um, extremely detailed on wrinkles. They want you to do these things yourself. Now in, um, I've seen it done in Photoshop where they have actually hand drawn them in with burn and dodge and those work really well if you have time to play with them. Otherwise I can suggest purchasing pre-made wrinkles. And this is a really neat, handy thing to do. These are all little wrinkles that you can stick on fabric. And um, I think it will take um, these little happy guys and um, copy that. And go back over here to the dress we're working on. Pick another layer for the wrinkles. And we will then paste these wrinkles on. And 
moving it to about where, you know, the wrinkles on the front of a dress would be. And anchor that. And then um, you can paste it again. And put it, let's say, on the back of this shirt part. And um, anchor that down. And we can paste it again. Get a hold of it. And put it on. We'll then need to go into a scaling tool. And we can scale that wrinkle down a little bit. Put it on the sleeve. Um, same for uh, we can paste it again. On the other sleeve. One about there. Maybe that's the inner sleeve. Um, either way, it had wrinkles on the original um, in both places. It had some wrinkles here in the chest too. Um, you can put those in there with these um, wrinkle templates or you can actually try to hand draw them in. Um, anchor those. Then on this layer, if these wrinkles are too strong and too dark, you can turn the opacity down on them um, for uh, so that they don't look so amazingly strong that they overpower the entire outfit. So I'm turning the opacity down on those, and I believe we are ready to export this. And um, I'm going to call it um, my go-to tutorial dress. And she's saving it in that folder. Uh, going back into second life. We will look at this particular dress and in the texture in the edit window in the texture in the edit window we can bring up the texture I usually use local when I'm testing it um, so that I can try it on the model many times before I decide that it's finished and ready to go. If you, lose, if you use local, however, you need to remember to upload that texture permanently to Second Life where it won't show. Pardon alpha blending. This is what I have so far. Um, with its wrinkles in place. Now to um, upload this permanently to Second Life, you need to go into Build, Upload, Image, and it will cost you 10 lindens to do it this way. That's why if you use local, when you're testing something, you don't spend 10 lindens every five minutes. So this is the tutorial dress texture. Many ways to get this over there. You could even just drag and drop it. Um, I'm going to drag it and drop it in here. It is a finished product now as far as the textures go. Um, I have made another tutorial on how to make yourself the creator of um, by adding a prim, a transparent prim to these objects to make yourself the creator. 
Um, I've also got a tutorial for um, how to um, tile textures um, that happen to be too big. I highly recommend shopping for textures in Second Life itself. It helps the economy and you're not treading on any people's copyright stuff by grabbing it off the internet. And they are always perfectly tiled, etc. when you buy them that way. And that is my tutorial for this GIMP version. I hope it helps somebody out there. I can say that Melia Mako's things are amazing and you can make a lot of profit if you um, use her templates and make your own things. You can even start a shop of your own and sell things just like I have in World.